Morning, Steve Free in Chicago with the morning grain comments. Well, the three grain markets still are trading basically the same fundamentals. And the beans were a little bit lower overnight, and the spread between July and November um, 2014 contracts are losing ground. We continue to hear the same stories overnight about uh, China demand slowing. We also hear stories about uh, cargoes that were sold to China out of Brazil is coming to the United States. We're also hearing that Argentina uh, soy meal cargoes are also coming uh, to the United States, and this is like pushing those prices down. Um, we're hearing that meal users in Europe <coughs> have, uh, for at least June and July, very good coverage right now, and so you're not seeing some of the urgency that we saw maybe 30 days ago and concern about the USO crop supply situation. Still, when you push the numbers, and look at the imports and add everything up, it still looks tight in the United States. So we'll have to see if we've done enough uh, work to solve the problem or if prices need to bounce back later once <coughs> some of the selling has continued. We also see the funds getting out of their positions before uh, the deadline for the May contracts and that role is also causing some resistance to the marketplace. Over in the corn, uh, kind of a mixed idea here. We're holding right at $5. A lot of that has to do with better demand for the corn, but also a little bit slow start to the U.S. corn planting season. Um, we should start getting some rains uh, uh, later tonight, maybe tomorrow across the Midwest, <clears throat> but a more important front comes early next week, <clears throat> and we'll see if that slows planting down. We are hearing that uh, planters are rolling in Iowa, and especially across the south, <clears throat> so there could be some plantings done there. Five-dollar corn seems kind of expensive <clears throat> if we get the crop planted but it's cheap if we have some weather problems. Over in the wheat, we continue to see the market reduce its open interest and long interest. Um, part of that has to do with the fact that we may uh, be slowing down in some of the unrest uh, or uncertainty in the Ukraine. We also are looking at pretty good world crop uh, production numbers for 2014, but in the back of people's minds, uh, we still have to be a little bit concerned about the U.S. crop, whether it's because of some dryness across the southern plains or some wetness and cold weather across the northern plates. Next week, Kansas will have their annual wheat tour, and historically, that group's done a pretty good job of guessing the wheat crop um, in early uh, to late <coughs> April and early May. So we'll see what they say. Last year, they were pretty close to the crop size. This year, they have a couple of challenges. Number one, the dryness in the, in the west. And number two, they could get a shot of rain before the trip and just how that affects the, the guess on the crop. But some people are a little bit worried about the hard red winter wheat crop and uh, what, it, what it might produce if it doesn't get timely rain. We looked at uh, the dollars lower. <coughs> European PMI data was better than expected weighing on the dollar. And as far as the China PMI data, it's still low but near expectation but still suggests the China's economy is just kind of dragging along. As always, these are my thoughts and not those of ADM and ADM Investor Services, and have a safe and profitable trading day.